Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're starting this video off in a different garage than you're used to, but this is my 2016 Legend 18 XTR. This is our fishing boat. My dad and I try to get out on this as much as possible in the summer, and we are going to be upgrading the battery for the trolling motor to a lithium iron phosphate today. Uh, we are primarily walleye fishermen. We fish Lake Erie, so we only have a single battery set up on this boat, and the good people over at LI Time were nice enough to send me the new trolling motor battery. So this is their lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour trolling motor battery. Battery. It's got an improved BMS for a higher surge capacity. It also has low temp protection. So I'm going to show you how to pop that in your boat. We have to upgrade the charger as well because the onboard charger on the boat does not support lithium. So we're going to be swapping that out with the NOCO Gen 5 X1. Just a nice simple charger. Like I said, we do primarily fish walleye. So we just have the one battery on board for trolling. If we were big bass guys, we'd probably run three batteries um, and we'd have to obviously get three batteries in the boat as well as a three bank charger. But for us, it's gonna be just one. So luckily on these boats, the trolling motor battery is up in the front compartment, not under the back floor, like on a lot of bass boats. It's right inside this little hatch. So nice and easy to work on. Uh, that tray is actually for a group 27, but I measured it and it should fit. And then this is our onboard charger. Like I said, doesn't support lithium. It is just a five amp uh, maintainer slash charger. Exactly the same thing we're gonna be replacing it with, but it's lithium. I also noticed we have a spare pop out here for a gauge and I think the shunt I have will fit perfectly in there. So that may be a future video. I didn't bring it with me today, but we're gonna get started on the install. This thing is a lot heavier than I thought it would be. I, it looks really lightweight, but it probably weighs like a pound and a half. It's pretty thick. Okay, so the battery does fit the Group 27 tray. It's tight, but it does fit, which is nice. I noticed this charger also has double fuses on the positive and negative legs, so that's nice. And then we have a 50 amp breaker on the trolling motor side, so it's well protected. And it's really that easy. The battery's in, it's connected. Uh, I'm gonna go plug it into the charger. We'll put a little bit of juice in this battery and just make sure everything works as far as the trolling motor. Um, onboard chargers, generally, I like to leave the cord hanging out the side of the boat. I usually keep a cover on this, so I just tuck it over here under the side of the cover. That way you can top up the battery anytime. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this thing has a little battery tester, and if I was using a lead acid, anytime I press that button, it never shows a full charge unless it's just come off the charger. So that's good to see a full charge on that. Hit the pedal here, and we do have some action. Okay, well it really is that easy to upgrade your trolling motor battery. So if your battery's got a couple years on it, it's about to uh, bite the dust, you might wanna consider lithium for your next one. I might do another one to run these downriggers. I keep these on the back of the boat. They run off the starter battery, which is okay, but I might do another battery next year just to uh, remove them from that start battery, have them on a dedicated circuit. So I'm gonna take this battery home. We'll go to my garage and we'll set up the usual tests and see how it does. All right, guys, we're going to be doing the usual torture test for the second half of the video. We're going to test out a couple features on the 100 amp hour trolling motor battery. Uh, it's got low temp protection. It also has an upgraded BMS. It says it can discharge a max current of 300 to 500 amps for five seconds. It is still rated for 100 amps of continuous discharge, but we're going to try uh, that surge rating and see how it does. I've got kind of a sketchy test set up. Somebody commented on another video and said I'm not stressing these batteries enough, and that's a fair point, but in a 12 volt, I only have up to 1,000 watts, but luckily I do have two of them, so we're going to put about 2,100 watts on this battery, which should be about 181 amps. Uh, I have the heat gun on low, that's going to be 700, and my Christmas lights at 350 on the one inverter. On the other one, we're going to charge the S2000 at 385 watts and turn on the space heater on low at 750. So, like I said, that'll give us 2100 watts. We'll just see how long it can pull that for, and uh, if anything kind of freaks out, if the battery cuts off, or if everything is happy. I think it's going to do good. These LI times are... Uh, Pretty proven, I've got another one of these, I've had it for a couple years and it's been good, but we'll get the test fired up and see how it does. Okay, so we're charging the all powers at around 370 watts. I'm gonna kick the heater onto low. There's 750 watts. 
We'll do the Christmas lights next. So far, so good. And we'll go low on the heat gun for an additional 700. And we cut out. But that's not the over voltage for the inverter, so we may have lost the battery. But it's still showing power. But we do not have 120 volts. Okay, I'm going to try this again. So I have the two lighter loads going right now on each inverter. I've got 350 on the lights, 380 on the S2000. I'm going to start these kind of at the same time. I think what might be happening is I'm running this and we're exceeding 100 amps for a good 10 seconds before I turn this on and this just trips soon after that. So I'm going to try to start these as simultaneously as I can and just see if that gives us a longer surge time if we get closer to that five second mark. So I'm going to set you down here and try to get these going at the same time. That's better. There it goes. Okay, so they did trip that time, but that was closer to like seven or eight seconds, I think. So that is definitely better. We are disconnected on the BMS, but hey, it did a, a pretty good surge. It wasn't quite 300 amps as claimed, but that's 180 amps. It's definitely exceeding the BMS's rated discharge current so I think that's reasonable um, my trolling motor has a 50 amp breaker on it anyway so this would never see north of 50 amps uh, in a trolling motor situation it just came back to life so I would call that a pass I'm not able to hit 300 amps on the equipment I have but the battery did what it was supposed to do it allowed an excess current surge for about five to eight seconds uh, and then cut it off so it's protecting the internal components of the battery doing what it's supposed to do I would consider that a pass Okay, we got the next test set up. I have topped off the battery, charged it back up to 100%. So I've got the shunt hooked up. We're sitting at 100% and I've set it to 115 amp hours. So we're gonna let this run for a little while, probably get just under two hours out of it. And then we'll come back and check our capacity, make sure we pulled close to uh, 100 amp hours, probably a little bit over. There we go, that's 750 watts, so we'll just let that run, like I said, probably just short of two hours, and uh, see how it does. Pulling 58 amps, so yeah, we'll check back in a little bit. And I guess we might as well see if it puts any heat in the garage, so for the sake of the test, we're at 12.5 Celsius. All right, guys, we're back in the garage. Temperature got up to 14 and a half. It's been a couple hours since it actually finished, so it's dropped back down again, but we are fully dead here. I'm um, gonna have to wake it up with the battery charger, so we'll see what we get. Okay, looks like we came up a little bit short. Turn that off. Uh, yeah, 16.73 amp hours, so we did not quite get our 100. We set the shunt to 115 to start, so we're about an amp hour and change short. Um, I'm almost wondering if it's due to this charger. I've been charging these lithium irons with this charger and I noticed that the last couple have come just short of 100 amp hours or rated full capacity. So uh, when I was charging them on my little Victron, I think I was getting a little more out of them. It might just be charging them a little bit higher. So take that with a grain of salt. I might try the Victron again next time instead of that thing just to uh, see if we do get that little bit of higher capacity. Actually, I'll put it at the end of the video. I'll charge it with the Victron and then I'll put it in the end of the video just to be uh, sure. But that's pretty close, um, pretty close to 100 amp hours. So for the final test, we are going to freeze this battery and then try to charge it. I was gonna put it outside, but it's not quite cold enough overnight tonight. So we're gonna put it down here in the little mini freezer. This thing gets to about minus five, minus six. So we'll put it in there for the night and try to put the charger on it in the morning and see what happens. All right, guys, it's a couple hours later. We've been in the freezer now for 20 hours. We are still on that zero degrees Fahrenheit mark. We're gonna try this again. Is 
hey there we go so it does recognize it and then the bms does cut out so oh it's trying to go again yeah it is stopping charging so the low temp protection does work it uh it does take a long time for cold to actually get inside of these batteries they're pretty well insulated so we'll see how frosty this guy is oh yeah it's frosty that thing is deeply frozen so i'm gonna put that outside let it warm up kind of gently so i don't make condensation on the inside of it but that worked low temp protection works uh, i did charge this again on the victron and i got 100.1 amp hours out of the charge so i think that charger is just a little on the light side as far as how far up it charges the battery so that worked well passed all the tests nice little battery i'm gonna put this in the boat next summer maybe i'll uh, bring you guys a video of it in action but i'm gonna have a link to this below as well as a discount code as always thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one